Hello, this is Matthew from Rock Paper Shotgun and you join me in a plane far above the snowy wonderland that is Halvoy, the new map for Firestorm, which is Battlefield 5's Battle Royale mode. Why they didn't call it Battlefield Royale, no one knows. What I do know is that it's been developed by Criterion, it arrives as a free update on 25th of March, and that it provides a pretty spectacular take on the now ubiquitous Battle Royale genre. The PR quote of the day was that this is Battle Battle Royale reimagined for Battlefield, which is over-egging it a bit. I'd say it's Battle Royale with some good bits from Battlefield nailed on, bits I will talk you through now. One thing to flag before I do, a technical hiccup meant our voice chat recorded over this PC footage. It's very annoying, so apologies for dialing down the in-game audio. It was either that or subject you to Ian from Eurogamer doing impressions of Inspector Morse. <laughs> Lois. <laughs> the man has a gift for voices, but there's a time and a place, and this isn't it. Oh fuck, that's a lot of hot. The one thing Firestorm gets absolutely right is the ring itself. The idea of a slowly enclosing barrier is the defining feature of Battle Royale, but I've never seen one envisioned with such physical presence. Rather than some vague energy wall, the Circle of Flames is a tangible horror show, squatting ominously on the horizon until it begins to move. And it is a hungry boy, gobbling up trees and pylons. When it hits buildings, Battlefield's destruction model does some heavy lifting as the storm chews through bricks and wood faster than I get through a foot-long subway Italian BMT, and that is damn fast. By the end of the match, where the ring is real tiny, it dominates the screen, turning survivors into silhouettes against a backdrop of Fanta-coloured death. Obviously, every Battle Royale game tells you to run from the shrinking wall, but I've never seen the ring sell the idea that it is a thing to be feared. When it gets close, it becomes quite overwhelming, turning the snow an unnatural shade of orange and flickering on your peripheral vision with heat haze. Criterion's visual and sound effects departments have created one of 2019's greatest video game monsters. And it's even worse if the ring actually overtakes you. As is the Battle Royale style, you aren't incinerated on impact, but are pulled into a post-apocalyptic hellscape where embers sizzle off human bodies and thick ash whips all around you. You obviously want to get out of this place fast, but as you chase after the wall, it does give you the best seat in the house if you just want to watch it churn through every structure it touches. And who doesn't? Considering how spectacular it is on the wrong side of the ring, I actually asked the mode's designer, John Stanley, if it's something he wants players to see. You know, you seem to last quite a long time in the fire, which makes me wonder if it's a deliberate choice. He explains that you take less damage outside the ring in the earlier parts of the matches, but that's more about not wanting to penalise people too early on. But he does want the wall to take people by surprise. Being suddenly engulfed while you're tucked away in a building, and then watching that that building shredded around you is a big part of Firestorm's appeal. Ah, you're gonna die. <laughs> Another way that Firestorm is plowing its own furrow is with, well, literal plowing. Yes, you can drive a shiny red tractor. Listen to how happy it makes Ian from Eurogamer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> right, I'm off to plow some fields. <laughs> If the ring is born from Battlefield's lust for crumbling masonry, then what you find inside the ring owes a more of a debt to Criterion themselves. Although it's been six years since their last standalone racing game, Need for Speed Rivals, they are still EA's go-to studio for vehicular carnage. In Firestorm, this means 17 unique vehicles, from the tractor to Rolls-Royce style motors that bring out the elite snob in me as I sit in the back and demand to be driven into battle. These are not vehicles made for the battlefield, but the team hope they will lead to battlefield stories. Those lunatic moments where so-and-so drove a tractor off a cliff and it landed on a helicopter and we won the game! The closest we got to any drama was a teammate hopping into the helicopter as the ominous last words, there is a bit of a learning curve, was heard over the chat. <laughs> Okay. Oh! oh. 
Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, 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 what happened? <laughs> I'm sorry. To be fair, these helicopters, new to Battlefield 5 and far more rickety than the choppers of later military history, do prove pretty hard to pick up in the heat of battle. I don't want to smear my teammate, so here's my own efforts. It's also interesting that Firestorm lets you call in vehicles if you can find one of the more rare supply drop items. Our most memorable round saw someone drop this flare in the final zone, which then spawned a tank. PUBG recently added the ability to call in an armoured UAZ if you were outside the zone, but it doesn't quite compare to arming yourself with an actual tank in the final minute of the game. Oh no 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 no! It's the kind of thing I'd normally get angry about, but someone else on the team managed to blow it up and we won, so now I like it. Ah, uh, it's awesome being fickle. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Uh, woo -woo -woo. Finally! <laughs> yes! V for victory. Awesome. Nice. <clears throat> oh. Takes a while to turn it, doesn't it? If a tank dropping into the final zone is Firestorm at its most unpredictable, other ideas let you take control of your fate. One of these is vehicle lockups, which are bunkers that contain a larger vehicle. In our case, we always found tanks. You unlock these bunkers by turning two wheels on either side, which also activate loud alarms, in theory drawing rivals to the area. Now, the bots at Criterion call these high risk, high reward, but it is one area of the game I'm less sure about. I mean, sure, they set off loud alarms, but think about the size of the map and the range of threats that can distract teams at any given moment. Whether you're fleeing the wall, or being grounded by a firefight, or tearing along in a smaller vehicle of your own, there's a lot to draw your attention away from bunker alarms. We emptied three bunkers with no enemy encounters, and then we had four people inside a tank, which seems wildly unbalanced to me. On the flip side, at not one point in the game did I detect someone else breaking into a lockup. When I think about how other Battle Royale games draw attention to events in the wider world, think of the drone of PUBG's C-130 airdrops for example, I just don't think the lockups currently offer enough risk to put off thieves. On the plus side, it means you can easily get a tank, which is always fun. Along the similar lines are the resupply points, which are a more direct nod to the wider Battlefield game. These appear as lettered capture points on the map, and if you manage to grab and claim one, it pops open a container storing loot. Again, I like the idea of a focus point in Battle Royale. Giving rivals a shared objective is a good recipe for creating drama in a genre that can play out as a load of soldiers getting bored in fields but it's going to take many more games out in the wild to see if this conflict actually manifests. In the matches we played, these bonus asides are just too quiet in the general din of battle to make any kind of impact. Everything so far has been about broader changes, so what about the meat and potatoes of match to match play? Well let's talk one through right from the beginning. Before anything kicks off you pick an avatar, classes don't apply to Firestorm, you don't have any equipment loadout to actually define you, so the choice is purely cosmetic. You then turn up in a lobby, which looks like the aircraft hangar from the middle of Battlefield 5's aerodrome map. As always, people go mad with boredom and start carving their website's name into the wall, or their own name into the wall, and then uh, trying to make it look like a painting? Listen, I was bored, okay? Sometimes mass hysteria kicks in and two strangers play a jaunty tune by stabbing an oil canister. Or a room full of international journalists pretends to be a snake. The sooner they open the doors for match start, the better. Up in the air, you'll notice one of the more interesting things about Firestorm. The ring appears from the start, meaning the full map isn't available to you. Halvoy is ten times the size of Battlefield 5's Hamada map, so this focusing is a nice way to cut through the bloat, and it also means different rounds can have a different flavour. You could be duelling it out in the snowy hills, or scurrying along the warmer climate of the coast. With your squad of four agreed on where to drop, or going it alone in solo mode, you then jump. The way you stick your vibrating fists in front of you makes it 
look like you're playing a first person Superman game, and it isn't just for show. Looking straight forward while you fall lets you get a little bit of extra distance, helping reach areas further from the plane. Down on the ground, the scrabble for equipment begins, but it's relatively simple. Weapons and equipment come in three tiers, common, rare and epic. Designer John Stanley tells me to think of these in terms of the skill trees used in regular multiplayer. Common is the base gun, rare would be halfway down the tree, and epic would be the full tree and probably have a tasty scope attached for good measure. Your inventory has room for weapons, a health item, a grenade and two gadgets. Oh, and all the ammo you can carry in your weight limit, that's this bar up here. Collecting larger backpacks allows you to carry more ammo and you can easily drop ammo packs for your team by using the ammo sliders. I'm told that they use this ammo weight limit to prevent people from grabbing all the ammo they don't need and leaving people with empty chambers. Of the gadgets, the one you really need every match is armour. This is added by picking up armour plates and applying them to your clothes. You enter the game with a common variant, which takes one armour plate, but rare or epic version lets you add multiple plates. More importantly, you sometimes flamboyantly spin the armour on your finger, which is a pretty good look. The presence of armour and a bigger base level of player health means fights have a different feel and pace to those in the main multiplayer. Considering how Battlefield 5 has struggled to find a time to kill that keeps all its players happy, it's going to be interesting to see how people take to a mode that offers yet another variation within the same game. Speaking about tweaks to the game's underlying recipe, I did wonder if Criterion had altered the destruction model to encourage the spectacular chaos that makes the game such a good anecdote generator. John Stanley says they haven't, but that they are more liberal with explosive gadgets. Technically, it's because they want to counterbalance the vehicles. It's vital the anti-tank measures are there to stop it from becoming a miserable on-foot experience. But it's definitely a fun side effect that you'll see houses blown to smithereens and people throwing around fireballs with less decorum than they might in the main game. He says towable weapons are often placed to have a good line of sight on built up areas, for example, giving people a gentle push in a more explosive direction. And there's the simple fact that, with an ever decreasing circle, all those exploding ingredients are pushed closer and closer together. The probability of them colliding increases as the match goes on. And there are plenty of new ways of causing trouble without interference from the powers that be. I'm particularly fond of the artillery strike flare gun, which replaces calling in airstrikes with requisition points. In fact, that whole requisition system is gone for Firestorm. The ability to target aerial bombardment with a squeeze of the trigger makes it much more of a toy, albeit a toy that happens to flatten churches. I don't think it will be big this Christmas. Aww. Too bad I wasn't recording it. Oh my <laughs> god. It's still dropping. Whoa! That's right in front of me. But for all it gets right, there is something that nags at me throughout the day, and I think it's a question of where Firestorm fits in, both within Battlefield 5 and the wider Battle Royale genre. One of its technical strengths is that it slots into Battlefield 5 and can lift its shooting and destruction physics and its visual polish, giving it a natural spectacle over games that can't offer those things. When you watch a helicopter chop into the roof or a literal wall of fire knock down a village, you are seeing emergent drama that simply can't happen in this game's rivals. But considering this level of blockbuster ambition, it is then odd to see it slotting so politely into the rest of Battlefield 5. Firestorm doesn't have any progression specific to itself. It feeds into the same overall career system we've been slogging through since November last year. You're levelling up classes and working towards unlocking new cosmetics and all that jazz. Other battle royale games or modes have managed to make themselves more of a regular destination by giving you something to commit to, whether it's smaller things like unlocking blackout character skins in Call of Duty Blackout, or the wider battle passes of Fortnite and now Apex Legends that get you returning to these specific games again and again. Without any hook of its own, Firestorm is just another way to feed the XP beast of Battlefield 5. Because of this, I wonder if Firestorm is more 
more of a distraction than an obsession. Whatever you achieved is just lost in the general blur of what you've achieved across Battlefield 5. I don't actually know if that is a criticism, I'm very much a casual dabbler in Battle Royale games, so the idea that you can just hop in and watch the world burn for an hour or two is kind of appealing. But I just don't see it having the framework or the structured long-term goals that people now expect of their Battle Royale modes. I think people will have a crazy fun time in it for a week or two, and I'm certainly keen to play more myself, but I'm not sure where it's going beyond that. And this seems to be the curse of Battlefield 5, a game that is excellent in so many ways, but seems insistent on delivering itself in waves of smaller activity. A new map here, a fresh mode there, all wrapped up in a season system that feels like you're reading an Excel spreadsheet of upcoming features which is never a good look. I had hoped that Firestorm would put a stop to some of this, deliver the must-have mode that the wider game had been missing, but now that it's here, I'm still not sure that it's quite enough. Of course, if you own Battlefield 5, you have less than a week to wait to find out if this is your new obsession. If you do own the game, you'd be mad not to dip in and mess around with it, if only to carve your name into the lobby wall. If you do have any questions about Firestorm, pop them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. Hopefully this has all made sense and giving you an idea of what to expect when the mode arrives on the 25th of March. Please do give the video a like if you liked it, and why not subscribe to Rock Paper Shotgun for more access to PC games just like this. Why not check out our recent Sekiro or Devil May Cry 5 videos to see what we've been up to. Thanks for watching, and we'll hopefully see you soon. Bye for now.